לכל אזרחי ישראל להתאחד כדי להשיג את היעד העליון שלנו, ניצחון במלחמה. אנחנו נלחמים בחיות אדם ואנחנו נוהגים בהתאם. One year of genocide in Gaza. 365 days of unrelenting Israeli bombardment resulting in one of the deadliest conflicts in the 21st century. The offensive began on October the 7th after an unprecedented attack by Hamas fighters. Members of Al-Qassam brigades, the armed wing of the group and other Palestinian resistance fighters infiltrated Israeli territory by air, land and sea. 1,139 Israelis were killed that day, including soldiers and police officers. 251 people, Israelis and foreign nationals, were taken captive. What ensued was a declaration of war by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Hamas and a promise to eliminate the group, unleashing a war of revenge and many firsts, breaking records in both scale and brutality. Now, 41,870 Palestinians have been killed in Gaza since the start of this war. The elderly, men, women, but the ones paying the heaviest price have been the children who make up nearly half of the Strip's population. In one year, over 16,000 children have lost their lives, the highest death toll for children in one year of conflict. But even surviving has come at a cost. More than 19,000 children have been orphaned, losing one parent or both. Now killed, orphaned, but also maimed. The UN estimates 1,000 children in Gaza have lost at least one limb, making up what is believed to be the biggest cohort of pediatric amputees in history. Israel has also targeted an unlikely group in combat, health workers, many arrested, tortured, and over 800 of them killed. This has also been the deadliest conflict in recent memory for journalists. 174 media workers have been killed. And unlike most wars, the people of Gaza have had nowhere to go. Unable to leave, they are relegated to declared so-called safe zones that the Israeli army has been pounding. 90% of people in Gaza have been displaced, some having to move not once or twice, but seven times. Weapons, though, have not been the only tool in this war. Starvation as well. About 96% of the entire population is facing high levels of acute food insecurity. Many children have died of starvation. No one has been spared and nothing has been spared either. More than 75% of Gaza's building infrastructure has been destroyed. Hospitals, schools, universities, mosques and churches all gone. What remains are these apocalyptic scenes of rubble, a scorched earth of broken lives and a shattered future. Welcome to Al Jazeera's special coverage, Genocide in Gaza, one year on. Alon Pinkas is a former ambassador and consul general of Israel in New York. He joins us from Tel Aviv. Thanks very much for joining us here on Al Jazeera. Uh, first of all, can you just give us some really important context here? I mean, how much did Hamas's attack on October the 7th really change Israel and how Israelis look at, at life and, and their lives now? Well, that's a very good question, but unfortunately, it's uh, even though today we mark a year to that massacre um, and the and the war that it unleashed, um, it's too soon to tell. And what I mean by that is that the devastation and the agony is still here, and whatever scars, whatever mental scars, you know, uh, 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 so societal scars. Uh, national scars it left um, will will take time to uh, to better appreciate and assess. There's no question, though. Back to your original premise, there's no question that that is that that day, is October seventh, two thousand twenty-three, a year ago today, um, is considered by by Israelis. You know, the uh, the average guy walking in the street, up to and including a prime minister. Um, is considered to be the worst day in Israel's history that became arguably perhaps the worst year in Israel's history. Mm. Um, both if you look at the statistics, but also if you look at the uh, 
at the zeitgeist, the mindset, the uh, how people feel. There's no question about it. You know, you can hit Hezbollah all you want, and you can uh, indulge in a uh, missile ping pong game with uh, with Iran. But the um, uh, the humiliation and the devastation of Hamas's attack on October 7th is indelible. Mm. What do Israelis want right now, a year on? Do they want to eradicate anyone that stands against Israel at this point in time, or are they actually looking for a lasting peace? Well, if you look at the composition of the government, then lasting peace would be somewhat of an oxymoron. Um, and that and that was true until October 6. Uh, this is a government that basically in its uh, basic guidelines of uh, December 2022 um, said that there will not be any negotiation with the Palestinians. Now, Israel had it, you know, a, 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 a fool's uh, ship or a ship of fools, rather. Mm. Um, thinking that we can uh, ignore the Palestinian issue uh, with Mr. Netanyahu inventing, devising, adopting and, and uh, uh, expounding a policy of weakening the Palestinian Authority by via strengthening the Hamas or preserving Hamas's uh, power in Gaza. Um, and in doing so, he can always have an excuse why there is no credible partner on the Palestinian side. Now, you can live in this denial for so long, and then came uh, October 7th. Yes, you're right, at, at, uh, using the word eradicate at, at first. The idea was to eradicate Hamas. But I think there's a realization that that, that is not uh, um, easy to do. That's almost impossible to do. Uh, the only way conceivably to do that is a course of action that Israel will not take, and that is basically occupy the entire Gaza Strip and be responsible for the lives of the, the desolate lives of the poor people who are living there above and beyond those who are members of uh, Hamas. Mm. Um, now, Hezbollah, Hezbollah is a completely different thing. So when you said eradicate everyone that threatens Israel, yeah, you know, every country would love to do that. But uh, that's that's uh, that's mafia or mobster uh, uh, mentality. That's not how countries can and should be run. Is there any consideration uh, given to the more than 41,000 people that have been killed in Gaza at all within Israel? No. I'm sorry it sounds so crude. My answer sounds so crude and um, um, unsensitive or insensitive. Uh, but no. Be and, 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 you know, for the first few months, um, Israelis were rarely aware of what's going on in Gaza, other other than the, uh, other than finding out via the media that the army is attacking and the air force is bombing, and special units have operated and 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 a neighborhood was flattened and an X amount of Hamas uh, members were killed, but the, the 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 scope of the devastation of Gaza, unless you watched Al Jazeera or BBC or CNN or any other. Uh, foreign media outlets uh, was unfamiliar. Then came the we don't care, look what they did to us. Uh, um, look, it's very human. It's very natural. It's not right. Um, you need to be aware of what's going on because that would uh, that will foment the next round of hostilities and violence, which, you know, we're not even thinking about the next one because we're still in the midst of the current one. Of course. Um, and as the pictures... Uh, um, came out or emanated from, from Gaza, uh, people's feelings were basically hardened. Again, I'm sorry to say that, but you asked me about how... No, maybe this is what we want, the insight from within Israel. Right. P people hardened. They said, look, this, you know, people call this a war of revenge. Yeah, it's a war of revenge. Look what they did on, on October 7th. Look at the slaughter. Look at the uh, barbarity. Look at the uh, uh, savagery. Uh, so, yeah, we're doing the same thing. And you know what? Any other country would have done the same thing. If you think that that some that a country or a terror group uh, um, operating from a different country would do this to the United States, would do this to France, would do this to Russia, or would do this to South Korea or any other, or Qatar for that matter, uh, how would they uh, um, react? And so people started feeling, you know, uh, this, this moral superiority and, and we're entitled to do everything and anything. And to be honest, you know, with uh, with American support and American backing, uh, the fact that the rest of the world was uh, um, uh, 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 aggravated and annoyed and frustrated and and, and accumulating uh, um, criticism, 
uh, didn't seem to uh, uh, matter to, mo to most Israelis. OK, we will have to leave it there, but we really do appreciate your insight uh, into the thinking over the last 12 months. Alon Pinkas, former ambassador and consul general of Israel in New York. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you, sir.